Welcome back. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 19, verses 18 to 24 today, straight to it. So David fled and escaped and went to Samuel at Ramah and told him all that Saul had done to him. And he and Samuel went and stayed in Naoth. Now it was told Saul, saying, Take note, David is at Naoth in Ramah. Then Saul sent messengers to take David. And when they saw the group of prophets prophesying and Samuel standing as leader over them, the Spirit of God came upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. And when Saul was told, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. Then Saul sent messengers again, third time, and they prophesied also. Then he also went to Ramah and came to the great well that is at Sechu. So he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And someone said, Indeed, they are at Naoth in Ramah. So he went went there to Naoth in Ramah, then the Spirit of God was upon him also, and he went on and prophesied until he came to Naoth in Ramah. And he also stripped off his clothes and prophesied before Samuel in like manner, and lay down naked all that day, all that night. Therefore they say is Saul also among the prophets. So this happened, part of this anyway, kind of happened before. The Saul was given an experience among the prophets some chapters back, and uh, people had that saying then, but they had forgotten all that. And now look at the stubbornness of this man, this man who's not being led by the Spirit of God. He sends one group of messengers, and they, they wind up prophesying. And then he sends group number two, group number three, and so on. And finally, Saul himself goes, and even Saul himself, he's so stubborn, he's so stuck, he's so stuck, and yet finally Saul himself prophesies, is forced to prophesy again, and uh, winds up prophesying. So there you have this situation. It, it, why doesn't this man get it? God, he's against God. He's against God's plan. He's operating against God's servant. Something is wrong. Hey, buddy, open up your eyes. But Saul doesn't get it. And we finally come to this situation where he's forced to prophesy again. When you're against God, when you're in God's in a, a, an enemy situation with God, you may find yourself forced in certain respects. God respects our free will, but once we place ourselves in opposition to him, there will be uh, things that stop you. There are times when God intervenes and stops Satan from things he would otherwise do because God will uh, protect his own. And so here we find Saul uh, just stubbornly pursuing, and he has the spirit of Satan. Saul has clearly the spirit of Satan. Nothing will stop him. Only God can stop him. And that's the way it is with evil. Evil that is allowed to go unchecked will take us to that place to where we, we are out of control. Saul is completely out of control here until God gives him, you know, a clue. He's not going to really get the clue, but he gives him a clue. You're against me, and I am God. So you might want to rethink all that. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, those that are opposing us are perhaps those who are opposing you, and they may be relentless. I mean, as soon as we moved on to the next thing here, Saul sends messengers to go and come for David again. He just won't stop. And we recognize this is the way evil is. Evil will not stop. Evil, it will proceed indefinitely, eternally. If it isn't stopped, that's the nature of it. It will destroy and kill and maim and murder. And so, Lord, we recognize when we notice that, we recognize it's your purpose to put an end to this relentless pursuit of destruction and hatred. Thank you that this is what you're doing. You, the God of love, are bringing the universe back to the right place. Lord, help us to trust in you no matter how long it seems to take. Your timing, definitely better than my timing. I trust you. Be our deliverer in your timing, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. May God be your deliverer in his timing.